From the moment of one's inception, there is but a single terminal constant. We're all gonna die. Well, that's just depressing. But, as one of the few experiences common to all beings, there is an inherent value in seeing different approaches to the notion of mortality, and observing how anime handles it is certainly worthwhile. There is a lot you can extract from the way a show deals with that, standing as an obvious indicator of the tone and overall atmosphere it intends to present. For starters, there's the act of dying itself. It may seem trivial, but as with anything that involves creative input, it's often in the little details that greatness shines. Is dying irrelevant or a major narrative element? Played brutally straight or directed in an unconventional manner? Many factors come into play when creating a memorable scene, it's why only a chosen few end up being reproduced and referenced several times across multiple shows. Specifically, I wanted to showcase one of my favorite representations of death in the medium, presented in Kaiba. Depicting a world where memories can be digitized and accessed by others, the series illustrates a multitude of fantastical moments throughout its run. The show's fourth episode, Grandma's Room of Memories, features an old lady who is unable to accept her husband's passing, which eventually leads to a protagonist exploring her mental realm in order to help her cope with the situation. She is then introspectively challenged by her younger selves in order to come to terms with the aforementioned event and finally confronts the deceased spouse himself. やっぱり怒って死んどんよ。なあ、なんで怒ったの？いやあ、すまんすまん。なあ、私もそっちに行きたい。それはどんなもんかいの？そうさせて。わしゃもう行くでな。ああ、じいさん。and as the old lady steps into the darkness, embracing death as long as they're together, the room's lights fade out and the realm of memories begins to crumble. The reason I highlight this scene is because it shows the passing of a side character, negligible to the overall story, and yet it's given terrific amounts of personality. That attention to detail in such a seemingly minor scene usually signals a great project, or at the very least, one that deserves praise for going the extra mile. However, what about going beyond the singular act of dying, reaching for ways the very notion of death is approached as a story-relevant element? This is where I feel a show needs to go beyond scenic execution since the payoff is only existent if the script and narrative structure as a whole allow it. For example, there is a plethora of shows based on the afterlife, often placing characters in purgatory-like settings, a scenario that lends itself to efficient character development, presenting an opportunity for self-discovery where individuals explore this intermediate dimension as they come to terms with death. A terminal rite of passage, if you will, achieving some form of catharsis accordingly. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for these series to resort to cliché melodrama and tear-jerking sequences with less than subtle exposition. <laughs> A show that goes against the grain in this sense would be Haibane Renmei, which, despite never directly framing its world as purgatory, follows a similar context, exploring the various stages of grief as individuals accept loss and, through battles with self-loathe, depression and alienation, embrace the need for communal aid and forgiveness as means of gaining solace and consequently ascending to another plane. Opposing such a pensive atmosphere, you may be dealing with a series that revels in violence, relying on gory demonstrations of brutality in order to make a point. Alas, this regularly leads to the narratively unsupported notion that the show's mature, utilizing shock value and an onslaught of character deaths as means to mask a weak structure. Shows that do this commonly fall prey to an immediate desensitization of death. By treating backdrop characters as disposable in comparison to the more plot-centric individuals, it removes any impact that their demise might have had and forms a lackluster reaction to any showcased killings. Does this mean an abundance of death can't be well utilized from a storytelling perspective? <laughs> of course not. Take Technolai is a striking example where pain and death are interwoven with its core themes and fatalist delivery. Indeed, it presents characters as disposable, but that's because the world building and atmosphere not only allow, but demand it treating the show's inhabitants as mere lumps of flesh to be quickly ravaged by their surroundings. It's an ode to despair, illustrating a bleak universe void of most human traits, and establishes humanity in its more animalistic state, affirming how, regardless of valiant efforts to deny it, the end awaits us all. 
It is curious, then, how the depths of mortality are often thoroughly explored in contexts where it's absent. When individuals are faced with the possibility of immortality, how do they handle the notion of living? Those that surpass death become hollow of reason for progressing, turning into little more than carcasses that roam the earth, or at least that's how Technoli sees it, a blunt strike to the idealistic notion of eternal life, transmitting that those truly alive are the ones that keep on surviving, even if vacant of external motivations beyond base urges. Conversely, a series like Cashier and Sins depicts death as salvation. When humanity faces the possibility of eternal slavery by the hands of a tyrannical group of robots, most flock to a savior whose blessing frees the afflicted from the torturous task that is living. Later on, a process occurs known only as the Ruin, a term that soon becomes synonymous with death itself, responsible for the barren industrial wasteland presented, and the once immortal robots of the world are confronted with rusting away until their eventual destruction, and we witness how previously untouchable beings despair in search of any method to contradict the end. Lastly, I recommend one of the most bizarre approaches to mortality I've seen, Paranoia Agent's 8th episode, Happy Family Planning. We're introduced to an unlikely trio, a perky young girl, a somewhat socially awkward young man and an older gentleman. Their connection? They made a suicide pact through the internet and throughout the entirety of the episode they keep on trying to kill themselves and failing in the process. Weird? Yes, but the episode's particularly notable due to its execution. <laughs> You learn tidbits of why these people pursue this final course of action and even get a twist of sorts towards the end, but nothing concrete, that's secondary to the overall theme. The episode presents this jarring contrast of suicide and comedic delivery and forces the viewer to adopt a protagonist's perspective, emphasizing their emotional detachment to living. The story sees life and death as so insignificant, it's unaware of why it's strange to make fun of it, a disturbing outlook indeed, but a brilliantly achieved one. Ultimately, death has no boundaries. It can be a game, played for laughs, and obviously for devastating purposes. It's presented by sea, air, land, and even freaking space. It's a topic that can and will be forever analyzed and it will eternally fuel artists. It's something whose surface I've only scratched, but hopefully this video stimulates some form of appreciation for how artists convey a topic that encompasses all. Which may come across as a tad more of it, but that's okay, because it's equal parts odd and fascinating. Oh, and I guess Evangelion's pretty good at all of this too.